minutes and uh, Phil's paid. what's going on with uh, some of these uh, payments to teachers. Uh, we've got the tennis uh, instructor, I think. I don't have, have it down here. It's at the end. It's like 4500 bucks. And um, I'm interested because that's a lot of money we're paying out. I know they generate a lot of fees, but we never see what fees they generate. And um, we need to know if we're making a profit on these or whether we're simply providing um, a place for someone to do business at uh, very low cost. Um, I don't know if Shane wants to talk about Gerald, I guess. I guess. Uh, but all the instructors seem to be doing quite well and if this is, uh, I'm just wondering if it, if it actually makes sense. Um, yeah, so all of our instructors are on a percentage basis, so um, 
with tennis, I'd have to look it up on, but normally it's a 60-40 split, um, where the instructor gets 60% and the river gets 40%. And that's true for everybody? Um, majority. We have a couple harder to get classes where it's like a 70-30 split. Okay. And who gets the big amount? The instructor who's doing the class. Is, is there any reason why you wouldn't charge them a, a, a flat fee or, you know, marketing fee or? This is like the, this is pretty universal across every rec department. It's always a percentage but, split. But we're doing the promotion now. Or we do the promotion, they provide, you know. The is that taken out before you do the split? No, and we do very minimal marketing. You know, we do our review, occasionally we put up a banner. And they do a lot of marketing on their own as well. Okay. Anybody else? Interesting. Okay. Um, let's see here. I know it's going to be called uh, for approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Public and comment open for items not on the agenda. Okay. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Well, Okay, so uh, I understand, Miller's are not here, but I understand that uh, problem is being ignored or something's going on, but you guys aren't um, working with them. They've shown every indication that they want to work with the district. And if this is, goes to, I, I guess the advice was, hey, it's a natural, disaster, we're not culpable, but if you look beyond that and you just say, well, what if they take us to court? What if it goes to court? Maybe our lawyer is looking to generate fees, but you can get up to 50000 real quick, and I would suggest that every effort be made on behalf of this district to avoid uh, avoid uh, legal complications here. I think there is no question that we have some cap culpability with the lack of maintenance in the trails. It was our dirt that uh, slid. Um, they have some problems too, but just to ignore it is to invite a lawsuit. And apparently nobody's been talking about that. And so if that's the case, I mean, uh, somebody needs to be fired because that's just very sophomoric. Uh, and if you need some more advice, I would say reach out into the community. We have lawyers in our community. Damon Connolly is a professional mediator and a lawyer. I would think he could uh, give some wisdom. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Uh, I'm just drawing a blank, he just passed away. Uh, we negotiated the last landslide. I think uh, Walter Dodds, I think Walter probably would have said, hey, let's see what we can do here and, and keep this uh, simple. Uh, the people will not be with you. You're especially the IJ, it's an IJ writer for God's sakes. He's been writing for the IJ for 30 odd years. You know, the public is going to be against you. So. Deal with it, please. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, are you going to read? I just said you're done. Thank you. Didn't know who you're doing. Okay. This is, I'm going to read this so I can be the last. This is in, regard, in regards to communication from the district manager in a timely manner. Um, and it's addressing Ms. Green and her comment after I requested a policy regarding timely responses to resident correspondence. Ms. Green said, when the staff is constantly inundated with requests such as these, it is not helpful. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody on the board realizes that in eight months I've only sent six emails to the district manager, so I have not inundated him. Two of the emails were, or the first email was to request that I get on the Brown Act, uh, per the Brown Act, I get on the annual distribution list for meeting notifications, which, I mean, I can't avoid that once a year according to the Brown Act. Um, second request was concerns about spending a lot of money on plants 
and the fact that we had pedestrian lanes that were uh, possible trip and fall hazards, and I thought that you ought to think about the liability. Um, my third letter was to request another sign about dogs on leash at one of the most, um, uh, one of the main entrances into the Panhandle. And this I requested right after a friend of mine's dog that I was walking got attacked by one of the four dogs that were off leash being walked by um, Patty and John Borrow. And one of their dogs attack, was off leash and attacked Bongo, who was on leash. So I wanted to get the extra sign. And then I had a couple, one letter, because I wasn't going to be at the budget meeting, I had several budget questions, and the district manager did answer me. Um, the fifth one was to ask where I could find the fire department kitchen RFP after I had looked through the website. I got a response to that, no problem. And my sixth request was asking where I could find the minutes to the July 20th special board meeting. After I had looked through uh, the website, it was a closed session that was not followed by a regular board meeting. So I wasn't sitting out in the lobby waiting for the closed session to end. And what I would like to say is had there been minutes as your bylaws state, there will be minutes created for each meeting. I wouldn't have had to inundate uh, the district manager with my sixth email of the year. So I just want to make sure that you understand that I am trying very hard not to inundate the district manager with letters, emails, and I don't know how many other people are sending emails, but I don't believe that six emails request for eight, eight months so far, nine months actually, because I didn't send any except follow-ups. Uh, I don't think that's inundating him. So I just want to make everybody on the board realize that I'm not doing that. That's it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay, I guess that's done. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have an update from the uh, Marinwood community. <clears throat> Community Service District Emergency Services Succession Committee to analyze and recommend potential alternatives for future operations and delivery of emergency services to the community. Calls for a discussion. Yes. <clears throat> so we held our first meeting, and um, most all but one of the um, appointees um, attended. We went over the mission and the bylaws. Um, how the meetings were going to be held. We identified stakeholders um, who were listed in the uh, in the minutes of the meeting. Um, our objectives are going to be to provide as quickly as possible, and hopefully by the next meeting, um, some analysis of financial trends and drivers over the last five years, and um, hopefully forecasting the next five years as well. Um, so that we can start to inform the community of where the expenses of uh, operating this uh, emergency services department are going. Um, we also made certain assignments on the financial trends and drivers. Um, Eric, myself, and Greg Stilson will be um, responsible for that. Um, operational considerations, our fire chief Tom, myself, and Greg Stilson will be on that um, subcommittee. Defining a template of services and costs to discuss with some of the neighboring communities. The chief, Eric, and Brandon will be on that committee. Um, discussions with other um, departments right now. Um, we've talked about San Rafael, Nevada, and County Fire as being um, possibilities. Those would include mergers, outsourcing, and leveraging shared services. Right now, Leah and our fire chief, Tom, are assigned to that subcommittee and administrative and legal planning for alternative solutions, Leah, Tom, and Eric. Are there any questions? Yes. Stephen? Well, this is a question, and then I have a comment. So uh, 
where did you uh, solicit uh, uh, the general public? I see pretty much everybody here is either a fire person. I think they're all fire people. Recognize Brandon. Brandon is a fire fighter, right? That's correct. Okay, so basically, it's the same group of people that uh, do the fire commission. Um, have you made any effort to reach out to the community at large? Yes, I believe we have. We posted a, um, a letter, have we not? Yeah, it went through next door. It's posted out front. It's posted on our uh, website. No, keep pushing it out through social media probably every uh, couple of weeks and we'll uh, have a thing about it. We'll put it out through our Facebook site as well. Mm -hmm. What about email? You have a pretty large email uh, address. It has not okay. gone out through uh, email. Most of our emails are people who have signed up for vet classes. We don't have a general distribution outside of the agenda request email list. So you won't, I mean, that seems like that, that's a uh, I didn't say we won't, Stephen. I just said it has not yet, and that's not typically what we use the email service for. I can certainly talk to Paula and or Shane about it and engage their opinion on appropriateness to send something out through that. Okay. So there are a lot of people that hate next door. There's at least one person that was kicked off of next door, me, and so I never <laughs> saw it. Um, so... Ron, I thought you were going to stop doing that stuff. Um, okay, so uh, so may I make a comment now, or is it just for the questions? May I make a comment? Go ahead. Okay. So uh, I was checking the San Rafael um, uh, budget, and CSA 19, which is Los Ranchitos, Santa Benicia, and uh, uh, golf course, uh, Peacock Gap, I guess. They uh, contract through San Rafael, and they have budgeted. They they pay 1.7 million dollars uh, for coverage over there. Um, we we as a district, according to our budget, is 2.8 million dollars. Uh, it seems to me if we say, hey, we've got firefighters, we've got equipment, you run it, you get the uh, uh, economies of scale, we could probably save a ton of money. And uh, in fact, if we did it for $1.7 million, say, hey, we'll do the same deal as, as CSA 19, we'd be making out like bandits. We'd get I have a million dollar uh, surplus in our budget. Is that your comment? That's my comment. Please take take. I, I I'm I'm actually kind of concerned with the the same people uh, doing figuring out what is going to go forward because we're in a place where we we. Uh, in terms of cost per person, cost per cover, cost per home, we're we're very high on what what um, Marinwood residents pay. So we, we and uh, about what seventy percent of our our uh, uh, of our efforts, our um, service calls, are outside of Marinwood. So I just think what we need to do is just. Let's make sure we're we're paying our bills and and let's we've got great guys who want to retain them, but um, the costs need to be shared appropriately in the county. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else? Ron? I'd just like to comment that forty percent of the city of San Rafael's budget comes from sales tax. Zero percent of the Marinwood's budget comes from sales tax. There's a great difference in how services are funded between different jurisdictions in the room. Anybody else? Yeah, I might add one little thing. Um, we, our fire department actually gets a lot of income, a lot of revenue, as far as I can see. We get revenue from CSA 13, and that's, what, half a million bucks a year? 
And I know we get revenue from Juvie Hall. I'm not sure how much money that is, but that's revenue coming in. Plus we get all the taxes that the residents of Marinwood have said yes to. I know the last time it was by a small margin, but the Marinwood residents seem to think that it's very, very important that we have a fire station right here. So I did want to say that it, to me, it seems like our firefighters, our fire department, brings in a heck of a lot of money. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Anybody else? Comments from the board? None. Okay. I think we've exhausted that. Um, we have a resolution, 2017. You're on uh, G1B. G1B. Amendment to emergency services. Draft amendments. <coughs> Go up a line. Review the draft minutes. That's what we, we just did. did. We just went after it. <coughs> Amendment to emergency services, succession committee bylaws. So moved. This seems like a logical thing to do, because, and, but only one instant I think was brought out as an example, and that is there's going to be paid firefighters on the committee. And so they theoretically could have a, a part in making a decision that relates to air compensation. Similarly, anyone else in, that lives in the district has the same sort of potential conflict if you leave that in. Because it's going to, it's going to eventually uh, hit their wallet. Yeah, hit their wallet with taxes, either a savings or an increase. Mm -hmm. So this seems like a very reasonable uh, amendment. Yeah. Anybody else? Anything from the public? So, yeah, Stephen. Um, why does the committee act as a body, not as individuals? It seems to me that if this is generating ideas, then we should hear from individuals. It should not be a, a, quorum, a, a, a body uh, speaking. Um, all that says is that the majority says this, but we want to hear all options. We don't want you to present the answer, we want you to present the ideas. So I don't like the way that this is set up as uh, basically people have to either toe the line or shut up. I think we're, I, well, it, it really is a moment ago. Um, for all intents and purposes, um, the anticipation is that over a period of approximately nine months, um, individual groups of this committee will be delivering analysis and reports for the sole purpose of instructing and helping our community understand where um, the costs and the operations of this emergency services group are going and to hopefully um, enlighten them um, as to what the impacts of those costs will be, as well as defining and developing alternatives that will be presented on a monthly basis as they um, do their investigations and they come to a summary of what those options might be. Um, those will be presented to the um, committee at the committee meeting and they will be presented again to the board in terms of status at the board meeting the following week. The idea is to make sure that the public um, increasingly becomes aware of the analysis that we are um, going to present, not emotion, not hearsay, but actually doing the investigations, quantifying the costs, quantifying um, changes that may um, benefit the community in terms of its operations, and hopefully getting more people in the seats here to give their impressions and also their feedback. 
So I don't see where um, this language is cutting anyone out. Well, if I may, may I comment to that? Well, these meetings are open to the public where he's they're presenting everything. But, but on, on the on on but let's let's use the Supreme Court for example. You always not use hang on for Court. hang well, on for a second. You want to make the dissent comment, is as even. important as the majority opinion because it, it, it if you're presenting the ideas honestly, you want to know where where the arguments are. That's all. If you're simply saying, hey, we decided this is what it's going to be. We did all of our analysis. We, you know, basically, we don't want to hear a motion. Whatever, whatever you say, you're just basically, you might as well just forget the whole process because you're just coming down with, with uh, uh, a, a canned solution that you're going to meet be mostly behind closed doors to decide. I'll tell you what. Maybe, maybe we can. Uh, maybe there'll be another way to do this, and that is uh, to uh, videotape all uh, all the meetings, so the public has an opportunity to understand what is being discussed. We want to know that the depth of the analysis is is there. You're more than welcome to attend the meetings. They're open so to I, I, I'm, I'm making a request for the democratic process. Okay. Anybody else? Brandon. Are we, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have an agenda. So are, we are talking about the strike, you know, the uh, proprietary. Yeah, I mean, if, I don't know if the board is, uh, is in line with striking that, then I'll just shut up. But if it's the flavor of going the other way, I can have this strong like this is it. Striking. <laughs> striking what? Strike, like, not striking that line out of the uh, bylaws. We're talking about the, the change. The change. We're taking out this. The only person that wouldn't have a proprietary interest is if you brought some outside expert oh, okay. in that okay. wasn't a taxpayer in the district. Okay, That makes sense, right? Okay. Yeah. This is the way it is. Yeah. No, to make the change to strike. To make yeah. the change. Yeah. Well, and I would also point out that the committee has no authority whatsoever. Any uh, final decisions can be made by the board and not by the committee. I thought it was going to be made by the public. We discussed that before. The public doesn't have the power to make an action. The board has the power to make an action. So you're going to reorganize Marinwood Fire Department without the input of the public or a vote or anything like that? Uh, I thought we just discussed this. I, I think there's no way to get through. No. I'm sorry. That's all right. No, no. Yeah. Is that, could, could you answer that? I didn't hear what the answer was. Uh, I thought that's what we are discussing already. We, uh, every committee meeting is open to the public. The public has okay, every so right to attend and give their input. So you're not going to open it to a vote. You're not going to open, open it, it to the me? public as a whole to decide to the vote. fate of, uh, of our fire uh, department. I, I don't know. If you're hearing what I'm hearing, but what I heard loud and clear last month at least was there would be outreach to the community. There'd probably be some community meetings once we had some information to share. And then we're going to decide and do it. I mean, that's what well, I'm hearing. No, we're going to. So first, we're going to get the input. The board is going to make the decision. So the public is not going to make the decision. No, the board that's why we're, we're is on the basically board. not. You're, you're running on the fifth year, some of you. Uh, you haven't been voted legitimately in, in this, and you're going to decide the fate for all 6,000 people in the valley. Is that basically what I'm hearing? Yes. Because I think that's kind of out, out there and outrageous, especially with these, um, these stipulations that you put in here, that everyone has to agree to the majority opinion. So basically, you can shudder. You can shut up people that you don't agree with. So if I come there, or Linda comes there, or someone brings something up, and you decide to go another way, nobody hears about it. You get to decide. Well, guys, 
you haven't done so well so far, and I really think this needs to be a vote, something voted on, because it is very significant to the Thank financial you. health of our district. Thank you, Steve. And, and I, there may be some legal recourse to that, too. I don't know. Um, the only thing I have is it, nothing is going to prevent the public, and obviously there's not a lot of public here, maybe there will be someday, but nothing will prevent the public from talking to these, the committee guys, okay? And the other thing is, it, I don't think anything will prevent the committee, well maybe this is your decision, will you be reaching out to different people in the community to kind of get their ideas and opinions? I mean, it's not just gonna be nine people, I don't think, coming up with all the decisions and all the opinions. I mean, you don't know what half the residents think, or maybe even more. So, I but mean, if you, you put are, it to a vote, that's... You are going to be talking to residents, right? Well, the committee is open to the public like our meetings are tonight. They're open to the public. Everybody is more than welcome to attend. Yeah, and I know, but you, like and I said, you see who comes to the meetings. And participate. And you're free not to, to listen to us as you seldom do listen to us. Yeah, and I sure. honestly, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that's basically the way it works. I've heard from several of you that, hey, we are elected to make decisions on your behalf. Well, I don't know. I, I believe that you're representatives of the people. And the best way to deal with such a magnanimous change like this is to put it to a vote. So, you can come up with the ideas. I'm pretty sure that's what you said all you were doing. But this really seems to indicate that you're going to come to a decision. You're going to say, this is why we came to this decision. And this is the way it's going to be. Thank you, Steve. Bang. Okay, okay so you're not listening so to me and we're not having a dialogue. So um, you calling just for a vote point. for the amendment to the emergency service bylaws. Did we have a first and second? Okay, I'll call for a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 2017-07, request temporary transfer of funds from the county treasury. Uh, we could need to approve this. Yes. This is a, a step that this district has had to go through for the past, I don't know, probably ever, uh, several years. This isn't a loan. This isn't they take a lump sum of funds and put it in our account. It's when the time comes that we uh, experience a negative cash flow scenario we are uh, able to draw funds from the county treasury until such time when the funds come back. We have access to funds. Right. I uh, actually think that we would be able to make it through the November meeting, uh, and maybe even possibly, depending on how things go, pull through the entire year. We have a little over 700000 in the uh, in, our, in our treasury fund right now. But it doesn't hurt. Uh, there is, it doesn't cost us anything until in, if and when we uh, find ourselves in a negative cash flow scenario. Sounds good. We do this every year, don't we? Correct. Okay. Call for a motion to approve. So Second. Any comments? Question. I, you said we don't get, does this cost us anything? Is there like interest or something with this? As we pull funds, yes, we pay interest on it. It's somewhere around the neighborhood of like 1.24% uh, in the same way that we make interest on our money that is in there. However, we don't pay any interest on it until we reach a negative cash balance. And then it, interest is also calculated on an average daily uh, balance scenario as far as the county treasury goes. So it just means we won't be making interest and we'll have negative interest, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we will actually uh, pay interest for the quarter. They calculate interest every quarter based on average daily balance. Does that make sense? Yes. Any comments? Um, Stephen. So, yeah, you do this every year. It's known. 
euphemistically as a payday loan, and that's used when people don't manage their cash flow uh, well. And um, I don't see any point that why we should continue to do this. This is just poor cash management as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I guess we need to do it again, but why? Why do we need to do it? Why isn't there not enough reserves in the bank to cover us through the end of the fiscal year? Just makes sense. We're, we're, our revenues are up, so you just you're not adjusting. Anybody else? Uh, call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Marinwood Community Service Memorial Recognition Policy, second draft. I'll take that one. To approve this? Um, yes, please. Um, so, second draft includes the uh, feedback um, that was provided in the last meeting. Um, it was for um, clear definitions of what is considered a memorial and recognition. Um, a request to utilize the website um, to clarify the process leave a window of potential um, substantial donations and um, to define the time frame and uh, clarify the responsibility for financing if a person nomina is nominated by the commission or the board. Um, these were the comments I was able to um, um, incorporate in this one uh, based on my written notes, Eric's written notes, and the recording of the meeting. Uh, it looks a whole lot cleaner than the first draft. Thank you. Any other comments? I want a mission. Right at the beginning of the definition where it says a significant contribution is herein defined as more than five years of volunteer service on district commissions or boards of directors. You forgot about the volunteer firefighters. Cash Assuming these are just criteria, but someone still has to nominate the person sure. or, or the business or whatever. Sure. Just this is the sort of the threshold. Okay, those are my comments. Mm -hmm. Would you rather have them taken out? Um. <clears throat> or increase the threshold? I don't know, it just seems like we're trying, kind of directing people as to when they can and cannot appoint someone. And I, I just thought that these were a little bit light, that's all. Um, that's all. No, I'm, I'm open to changes. You know, it just seemed to me that rather than, you know, um, time spent on a particular committee, um, some sort of 
tangible, tangible contribution would be a better criteria for um, recognizing someone, I guess is where I'm coming from. That's where the and comes in. So I think given that so many people are volunteering their time um, on commissions, boards, firefighters, as you rightfully pointed out, um, I, I think it's nice to show people that we appreciate their time. We don't necessarily have to name a building in their name. That's not what this policy would say. Um, when you go down to see the levels of recognition, to me, it was the, the, the second bullet, the letter from the board of directors and mention on the website that would be most applicable in case of you know, five years of volunteer service or you know, blah, blah. Um, and these um, could be discussed. I mean, if somebody felt very strongly that after five years of volunteering service, this certain individual made such contributions that it deems a memorial or a plot, then we would um, decide it in a public meeting. Um, Okay. I just uh, I I wanted to have some kind of criteria, criteria, some measurable. I don't know. Okay, um, I understand. I mean, we can increase it if you like. We I have um, we have no policy at this point in time. I recognize the need for a policy based on recent events. Um, so I'm not going to throw more water on it. I just wanted to make those comments. We'll see how this plays out. We can always amend it later if we need to. So are we going to approve this with the um, corrections? Is that? Um, I think corrections. Yeah, that. I just, um, if someone does some heroic act, like one of our firefighters or volunteer or even a community member where, I don't know, they rescue somebody, maybe we would want to recognize that. I'm just, I'm just trying to broaden it. Uh, so you have the option of, of recognizing people without them serving on board or create, you know, these, these criteria. I mean, just, just, just kind of a general way that you can say, or something that the board feels was significant. That's, that's where the other enhancement to the district at large, that was my kind of catch-all. Okay. <clears throat> uh, anybody else want to chime in? So, are we going to approve this? Do I hear a motion? Second. Do I hear a second? What are we approving? Are we going to make any changes to the language? Yes. In other words, donation of fixed assets versus purchase of fixed assets, for example. That was my understanding, yes. Okay, all right. And I need volunteer And volunteer firefighters, yes. I'd say that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 District manager report. <coughs> Uh, okay, uh, a pretty detailed report this month, obviously, uh, you know, for any questions, uh, you know, kind of some of the bigger things that are happening. In fact, uh, actually tomorrow, uh, I believe, uh, Miller Pacific will be out to start the uh, drilling process to pull the test borings behind the pool shed as well as uh, along the northern field, and then from there they'll be able to put together a geotechnical report as well as uh, potential recommendations, if any, towards uh, repairs that could be needed. Uh, and all of this, of course, is related to the FEMA claim that's currently out there. Uh, we have entered into an agreement uh, with a gentleman who does a lot of work with the county to assess provide recommendations for Queenstone Fire Road as it relates to the repairs and drainage needed out there. Uh, 
is performing very similar work on the portion of the county road sections. It also includes oversight of construction that the chief is not here, but it is my understanding that the county will be performing with their uh, equipment and labors at, at uh, cost to the district. So that one is going to be significantly reduced from what was budgeted. Is that the, the pine? Part? No, this one is Queenstone. Oh, just Queenstone. Just Queenstone, correct. Um, I've been in a lot of, Steve, good segue, I've been in a lot of communication with the Marin County Open Space, uh, and they presented uh, their status update at the last Park and Rec Commission meeting in regards to uh, an initiative they have that would decommission Ponte Fire Road, uh, regrade Ponte Fire Road, and ideally uh, returning it back to its natural state as much as possible, uh, and incorporating a multi-use trail that would go along the ridge line, wind up connecting up uh, with other various trails out there and, and do a large loop. It's a pretty uh, neat project. The county has probably invested close to eighty to $100,000 in studies and such for that project. They are committed to it uh, through biological studies, everything else, um, and uh, everything about it sounds like it is a win-win-win, a win for the county, a win for the district, and a win for all of the uh, all the residents and people who use that area. Uh, and then uh, on 598 Loganberry, they've almost performed, uh, completed their work. There was a encroachment, uh, entry and encroachment agreement uh, that was uh, eventually signed by them on September 15th. Um, as stated, uh, with their moving forward the work, uh, that's most likely going to have a negative impact on the FEMA claim, and it'll most likely need to be withdrawn from our larger claim. Um, and then all of the, uh, as it happens, work, I will say, uh, debris removal, uh, emergency preparedness has been completed, receipts submitted, invoices submitted, claims submitted. Uh, so I'm just kind of waiting to hear back on where all that falls, and that includes uh, a lot of force account labor, um, although only overtime force account labor is really eligible for reimbursement, but use of our equipment, including vehicles, uh, chainsaws, purchase of sand, sandbags, uh, removal of, uh, of one large tree in the open space that had to come down but we couldn't get to until uh, the area was more accessible, so on and so forth. So all of that has been submitted. Uh, just kind of waiting on these other items and they still have not given us any uh, set indication as to eligibility. Um, I do, backing up to uh, Ponte, um, I do uh, want to get back up there again and kind of see how it's settled throughout the end of the summer. Uh, I may very well recommend we bring a geotech up there to do a study and assess. The county plan isn't going to happen overnight and in fact they're probably from complete implementation a minimum of a year to a year and a half away on being able to do all that. So it would probably be good to bring somebody up there just to assess any uh, potential risk that it currently has. Uh, and Tim Best might be a good person also to work with to examine a couple of very specific <coughs> areas uh, and provide uh, grading recommendations as well. Um, otherwise, uh, it's been a busy time. Um, Director Schwartz and I met with the planner. We had a planning, uh, what's known as a county uh, planning consultation. We showed them the four proposed sites. Uh, they advised that uh, we move forward, kind of submit a site plan review application that included a biological set, site assessment. Uh, I have gone, entered into an agreement with a corporation named Pernusky Chatham, who was actually one of their, uh, kind of, for lack of a better term, pre-approved qualified consultants for this type of work. Um, they are located out of Sonoma County. We're originally going to get started on that immediately, but said, hey, we're a little uh, crazy up here with all the incidents of this weekend and this week, and as soon as things calm down, we'll follow back up with you and get the, that work started. Um, other items of note, uh, well underway on the financial audit, and I'm starting to kind of piece together some potential models to start plugging data into for the five-year financial forecast uh, and recently received a lot of files that were used uh, when the district did uh, perform their sustainability study probably five years ago, I would suppose. So I'm hoping that some of those models can be uh, a little bit of a plug and play with updated data. Any idea of the cost for the ski chapter? Yeah, it was... Uh, about three thousand dollars, I believe. Uh, and it, it is 
is just really a first step for the application. Correct. I just have one or two questions about the uh, Queenstone Fire Road. Now, if the Queenstone, and this is from his report, so that's what we're talking about, right? His report. But, uh, the first thing he talked about was the Queenstone Fire Road. Fire roads are off leash for dogs. If the Queenstone Fire Road becomes a multi purpose trail, Wait, you didn't, it won't what? Let me ask my question. The district manager said it's going to be a multi-purpose trail. On the Ponte, Ponte Fire Road. The Ponte Fire Road, not Queenstone. The Queenstone Fire Road is being converted. No, Ponte no. Fire Road. Ponte Fire Road. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I have been hearing this for the last three months that Queenstone was going to be fixed up and converted to a multi-purpose trail. No, no, no. Perfect. Thank you very much. No worries. You had two questions. Um, well, I don't need to ask the second one. Okay. Stephen? So uh, the biological assessment uh, assumes that you're, you're going to choose to build close to the creek. That's going to be a problem, OK? No, that's not correct. OK. The biological assessment is for the four different sides. Four. Okay, so there's only one that doesn't impact the creek, and that has not been drawn up to the same kind of specificity as uh, the others. I request that, that you give that serious consideration. That area where the maintenance shed is, I would love to see re reclaimed for a playground or recreation or just open space. There's way too much uh, uh, real estate being used poorly in that area and we could compress it and put it right next to um, uh, the fire station without impact on the rest of the park. Um, it seemed to me when you open this up to the community there was a great deal of support for that idea. Not uniformly. Linda was one. She doesn't like the idea. And none of the, the uh, none of you guys like it, but the community seemed to like it. And if you're not remembering it, I've got the tape. We can look at it, okay? But please, please mm -hmm. listen. Please be 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 courteous to me. I'm, that's what I'm I ask. To, I'm trying to you're, understand why you're even making these suggestions because this is a site plan review if you bothered reading this, for the four separate sites that were drawn up, submitted by the public, submitted by the public. Okay. The one over here. We're looking at four. Was a sketch. Okay. Everything else was detailed. All I'm saying is give it proper consideration. That's what the whole thing is. That's what we're doing. I have nothing further, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Eric. Fire Department Kitchen Remodel Project. Approve or reject. Accept bids from the lowest bidders in response to notice inviting bids to authorize staff to enter into contract with lowest qualified bidder to complete project as specified. There were only two bids. Two bids were received. Unfortunately, the chief couldn't be here to speak to much of this, so I will fill in the best I can. Um, yes, two bids were received. Total base bid cost was there, and the entire uh, uh, bid package uh, has been included in the board uh, packet. The, uh, the district ultimately has the five options that I have listed down below. Uh, with the exception of keeping in mind that with option four, uh, which says award the bid to the lowest bidder and then make reductions to the project via change orders as stated in the RFP, uh, you do reach a threshold in change orders where it substantially changes uh, the project, at which point it would need to be 
re rfp and rebid. great idea. County Council shot it down, but what I had proposed is, um, I don't have my, is, I need to get the, uh, I have the numbers of the items, let me get the bid so I can kind of understand what I'm proposing. I was suggesting that item number two be deleted altogether. In fact, I don't even see a socket in the room. Uh, I propose that uh, item four be deleted altogether. Uh, the, the painting is extremely minimal that has to be done. Uh, I propose that the upper cabinets be deleted from the contract. So if, if they somehow envision there is a soffit there, now the soffit, if it were there, doesn't have to be removed. Uh, by the way, the, the first item took a, the item item two took $1,000 out. Four took $12,000 out. If we remove the upper cabinets, I'm guessing that would take about $2,000 out. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out the dump demo of the kitchen. I thought it was half demoed already. Well, they still need something in there in case they have to tear something out. If they were going to tear the cabinets out up above, then that's a demo line. In any event, uh, number nine first is install additional electrical outlets. I think three would be the most possibly add there. There are already lots of electrical outlets. Uh, item number 10 could be deleted. There aren't any under counter light. There isn't any under counter, counter light, lighting now. And we're trying to get back to where we were at least. We, we, we were, it would have been great if the bid came in low, then we could do some better. But the bids aren't coming in low, it appears. Uh, we could Delete item number 12, furnished install stove and hood. There is a stove. It's not the greatest stove in the world, I understand. There is a hood. And to get this done, maybe next year in the budget, we get a stove. Uh, same with the refrigerator. Uh, with all of those deletions, that was $32,500, which then made the bid only $54,500, uh, which is a lot better than eighty seven. Still nothing to brag about. But county council says we can't do this. So based on the fact that we can't do this, I'm suggesting that we, as a board, pick option number, <coughs> the right page, option number three, reject the bids and then rebuild the project with potential changes. And I would propose to meet with Eric and the chief on Monday, go through, come up with a shopping list of what we want to change and get it out to bid again as quickly as possible. $2,500 different than my calculation. Good job. Anyway, you're much more into this than and, I am. And but what, can you tell me, I, when I hear the word soffit, I think of something under an eave on the outside of the building. What is soffit? Soffit is this, is this kind of a soffit. Here, soffit. Sort of sheet rock underneath? I don't know. I look, here are the pictures. There's no soffit. I didn't see a soffit. I don't Anyway, that's a minor thing, but unless we call them the trim work. But if we aren't going to bet, if we can, if we have, if we're stuck with leaving the upper cabinets to, to save money, then the, the soffit I yeah. can become blue anyway. Okay. The only, you know, we got a bunch of firefighters here. I might ask my question. It appears they were going to take the counter. We're now they've got a, a, a green countertop sort of thing across the end of the kitchen. The drawings appear to show to just to run the, the straight counter right out to the wall and stop, which means if anybody's working at the sink, theoretically water could splash into the day room. And it seems much more logical to leave that little bit of a raise there, because the counter on the inboard side, on the kitchen side, was lower than that green thing, wasn't it? <coughs> yeah, on the, on, the, on the sink. Yeah, yeah. the sink there was raised. Back. That's what I find. It doesn't, I don't see a, I'm just asking that because I think we could even save some money there maybe because there's less demo on the wall now. And I think they end up with a better kitchen. Can I ask a question? Yeah. 
I'd like to address the firefighters. Thank you all for being here, or many of you for being here. What is it that you would like to see back as soon as possible? What is causing the most trouble? Let's just say that we cannot do a complete kitchen remodel at this time because we simply can't afford it under the rules and regulations. What would you like to see first if we can afford it? Anyone have any input for us? I don't know. I don't want to sound. I don't want to sound shallow, but I'd like to see a completed kitchen. I think my guys would too. I think uh, the kitchen is where you know we meet every morning and where you know camaraderie starts and where morale starts and uh, that kitchen isn't providing that right now. And it's an embarrassment. We hold people. We have people of the public come in. I know. I know personally. I. I, with the approval of the chief, I volunteered up a birthday party uh, for uh, for preschool kids. And I know it drew eleven $1 hundred dollars, and uh, so they're they're going to be calling on that pretty soon to have a birthday party with their children at the firehouse. And right now it's embarrassing, and it's Im I would be embarrassed to have them come in and see what our kitchen looks like. Right now. Okay. Now that might not be high on your priority list, but I believe it's high on ours. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So a couple things. I um, I guess off the bat, I would say, well, it's a bit of a liability question for Eric, because I would reject these bids. But what happens if we say, let's treat this as a business? Let's, you know, we understand this random wage thing. What if we just say, screw it. We want a kitchen as quickly and as cost effectively as we can for our firefighters and say the fair market value of that kitchen is 35,000. Let's just 40, 35, 40, I don't know. If you had a competitive bidding process and we weren't dealing with this government crap. So no offense, but I mean from the business side, what does that open us up to? Is it gonna be Steven or Linda or some community member who would turn us in if we were to get busted for doing that? <coughs> Why do you think that, that's insulting. Why do you think I would do that? <coughs> Because we've been accused of violations. So just being completely open and honest, full disclosure, on camera, whatever. Like, what happens if we just go back to whoever the first or couple bidders are and say, "Come into our kitchen." Yes, I think DIR registered contractors are who are going to come out of the woodwork and sue us. Exactly. They won't be the neighbors. They're not going to. I don't think. It's going to be contractors that say, hey, we can't be the low bidder because we're trying to follow the law. Right, so there's one or two people who hunt around for that. But you only need one. And then you settle. <laughs> so if you can settle for ten grand, and that's still, or you say you even settle, say the kitchen's 35, and you settle for another 35, you still come out under that 87. So we acknowledge, hey, maybe there's a lot, we open ourselves up to liability, and if that comes due, you know, we negotiate and we settle. Uh, and if it doesn't come to you, we save some money. So again, you know, risky probably, far too risky. But again, thinking outside the box of how do we get a complete kitchen? Because I think trying to nickel and dime the project down is ridiculous. I just think <coughs> that's, you know, either we pay the, see if there's something else. I have a feeling that even if we send this out again for RFP, I mean, at this point, looking at all this, I mean, these people have a lot on the market. If this is the bidding range we're starting with, I mean, I would assume all these people talk to each other as well, and that in this market, if that's kind of our bandwidth we're looking at, so then, you know, how much are we lowering our standards and to say, oh, well, now we're going to be really excited to get a kitchen for 80 grand, and we are waiting another couple of months to go through this process again. So at what point do we do something, I think? It's all good. Um, I think we're all very frustrated and we're tired of talking about it. Let's just agree, first of all. Second of all, in our conversation about the first RFP, I wanted to put a ballpark of $40,000 to invite bids that would be more in line with what we can really afford. 
And what we have now is really kind of what I could foresee happening, and that everybody marks up the price because they see a government contract, nobody pays for it, it's free money. Well, we're the taxpayers, we're paying for it, so <coughs> it's not free. Um, having seen the two uh, bids, especially the first one, which I believe comes from, I'm sorry, second one, which comes from um, a local um, a person um, who apparently had a much lower bid before, now suddenly I don't know what happened. Um, seeing these two bids and being as frustrated as I am, I would recommend um, option number five, rejecting all the bids and um, acting as a, a general contractor and therefore saving the markup. Um, silly comparison, but when I was planning my wedding and I was looking at all the magazines and suddenly they were like, oh my gosh, there are so many things I have to think about. It when you remove this and you think, what do you really need? There are really very few things that you really need for a wedding. Here, again, I try to simplify it to like, really, what do we need? Um, I broke it down to tasks for management and tasks for uh, maintenance staff. I believe our maintenance staff could install drywall and paint. I believe they could measure and install cabinets. I believe our management is perfectly capable of ordering appliances with install and selecting cabinetry only for lower cabinets, as well as finding electrician, plumber, and counter install. Um, these would have to be um, insured, blah, blah, BIR, whatever, um, so the proper prevailing wage, so um, we don't violate any laws. I'm personally not in favor of trying to chance it and go under the table and try to do it on the cheap illegally, because if I don't like the laws, I will try to change them. I know it's, it's a painful process, but that's why I got on the board. If I want to see something different, then I'm going to roll up my sleeves and try to do it, rather than um, offend people like the um, Mr. Breyer did, or um, uh, try to, you know, go around and, um, again, I recommend uh, we act as our general contractor and we utilize our in-house labor and our um, ingenuity and brains and uh, try to give our firefighters the kitchen that they need. I know it's a cultural thing, but you also have to work with us here, guys. It's not going to be a $100,000 kitchen. You just don't have the money. Um, I do understand you need a functional kitchen with a fridge, with sink, etc., etc., and that, that looks okay, too. You know, it's not going to be super beautiful, but what you have now is a disgrace. And I think we need to remedy that as soon as possible. I have a couple of questions. Did CWS Construction Group actually visit the site? I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, I know. From looking at their bid. <coughs> I, I don't know. I know, uh, I know the chief had a conversation with somebody from there, but again, without him here, I don't know if they were on site. Maybe one of the uh, firefighters knows if they came by and saw, but I, I can't answer that question. Okay, fair enough. Um, since we did not get to see John Pope's second bid, I really don't understand. I mean, it would have been instructive, I think, to see what the differences were between his first bid right. and his second. But <laughs> doubling it um, is a little shocking. Um, so, for all intents and purposes, um, you know, I'm, I'm inclined to. You know, I'm not. I'm not in favor of either of these bids. I'm sorry, you're not in favor of uh, either bid. Either bid. Accepting either bid. Normally, when contractors are bidding jobs, it relates to their schedule. Well, I don't know this to be a fact, 
I would assume that when Mr. Pope made the first bid, he needed the work, and by the time he made the second bid, he was already busy yeah. with other projects. <laughs> and if he got it, great, he could hire some other people and do it. But well, if, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't have any other, I'm unaware of any other kind of reason for a variation like this. But what we didn't have when we did this RF, this original RFP, we had no idea on real costs. And I think with these bids, we, we now do. And I think we could, you know, if taking what Isabella is suggesting, is if we want to put, we could say we have a, an architect's estimate of $50,000, which sort of makes sense based on the, the numbers that I took out of the $87,000 bid. There's still some other things to do. Just like, I, that's why I asked the question about this pony wall. Uh, if we don't have to reframe it, and it meant re there's conduit in that wall that's too high, if we bring it down to the counter level, we've just saved all that work, and that's just time-consuming work that is expensive. If we leave that there, all we have to do is get the plumbing in there, maybe add some electrical, I'm not sure, and slap sheetrock on both sides, and that wall is done. Uh, and then, then we put the new cabinet against it. Uh, we could, we don't, right now, they have a stove that functions. They have a hood that functions. The upper cabinets are functional. The refrigerator is functional. We could put all of that in there as additive items that we would have the choice of either including or not including with a base bid. The other thing we, we've been, I've been wanting to talk to the chief about, and he just, between the fires and now his uh, personal issues, uh, to find, you know, are those the the gold plate appliances, or are they the serviceable appliances? And uh, if you remember the last thing, I was saying we need to come up with serviceable appliances. They can't be something that is going to you know fall apart in a year. But uh, maybe you know, the, it's interesting. The bid for the the stove and the hood was uh, six thousand dollars, but the I looked up the Wolf Range, the model called out for, I think it was $6,300 itself, with no installation and no hood. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, that's sort of interesting, but Wolf Range is kind of, you know, they're great ranges. Yeah, they're high end. Yeah, they are. I went to school with Joel Wolf. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. <coughs> but I think if we were to decide to leave, leave that range, and maybe in next year's budget, we replace the range with the refrigerator or both. Fine, but at least we get the kitchen back together. Yes, I think we need to um, define the scope as a construction project, not an appliance, you know, um, purchase project. We need to get it down to where, where we're getting what absolutely has to happen in that kitchen to get it functional again. Bring it in as quickly as we possibly can within budget and we can deal with the appliance issues later. They're not completely inoperative, from what I understand. Well, there's no dishwasher. And sink and garbage. The dishwasher. Is but the, the stove and refrigerator. Yeah, I, that's my suggestion also. And again, all of this does come back, at least in my mind, to that peninsula where the water needs to be reestablished. The water service, the sink, the dishwasher, et cetera. Um, so that they don't have to shuttle their dishes all over the community center in order to um, wash them and keep clean. Any input from Ron? Yes, I have a suggestion and a solution. I would suggest you make the um, changes or short suggested. And I will prevail upon CFA 13 to pay 25.9% of the remodel on the kitchen. Okay, uh, question. Does that mean we're going after that again? I think we have to. Yes, I think so too. So again, um, this is just another process that we're going to have to go through, soliciting other bids, waiting for the bids to come in, making sure that they are within budget. That's a generous offer and thank you. Um,
but you know, again, time is what I was concerned about with going out to bed again and increasing the scope. This was a, this was back up in the hey, sir, you at your end up. Yeah. I'm, I'm Steve Farrak, I've been a Marinewood resident for over 30 years, and I haven't been here very often, but uh, I used to be a firefighter, and at one time, in one of the stations that I was at, they didn't have a kitchen because they decided they were going to take the kitchen out. <coughs> and then they kind of just left it there because of all the red tape that goes on with all of this. In the meantime, firefighters ended up getting sick because we were working on a piece of plastic. All we had was a sink, and it was, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. So my question here is, these guys need a kitchen. I mean, if you were to go home tonight and say, how long can I go and last and do stuff without a kitchen, it gets pretty tough. I mean, they got to work here, they got to go out to fires. I mean, there's all these fires going on. We could, we could have a good time. I mean, we just. So I think, you know, we, we should try to do our best for these guys, you know, out of the goodness of our hearts to make this happen. And I, so all I'm trying to say is, let's get on it. That's all. <clears throat> so I don't I don't know why you guys aren't entertaining the idea of just going with the lowest bidder. I mean we're going on eight months now without a kitchen, and it's frustrating. It really is. Um, if the kitchen here in the community center was in the disarray that our kitchen is in the firehouse, would you let it go eight months? I mean I know it makes zillions of dollars in revenue for the district, but. You know, we, we need that kitchen for cooking breakfast and making lunch and eating dinner. And what it is now is just, it's an embarrassment. You know, members of San Rafael and Nevado, they come into our station, they ask why it's taking so long. Instead of just kicking the can down the road and getting new bids, you know what you're going to get. New bidders are going to come in with the same amount. So. Just go with the lowest bidder, just get it over with. You have the money, just don't be reluctant to spend it on a department building, on a district building. It's like, it's frustrating. It I'd say thank you. So, um, I find myself in agreement with Director Green and Director Perry, Director Schwartz. Even Director Naylor and Director Shea. Um, I think uh, Leah was onto something when she said, hey, let's just set a price, let's get what we can get. With one big caveat, um, you're, would, you still have to, it exceeds the $25,000 threshold. Now initially, just for your information, we did have a $25,000 bid and because of and we also had a donation for that twenty-five thousand dollars, so it could have been done eight months ago. Okay, twenty-five grand. But they got cold feet, and they decided, hey, uh, we got to check this out. We got to follow the law. There was a misunderstanding of the law. The law changed. I suggest what we do now is say, because there's a twenty-five thousand dollar threshold, and said, we're going to look at we. This is what we want. Here's the plans, da da da. This is what we want. We're going to go with the best deal we can get for twenty-five thousand or under twenty-five thousand, and then that's where you leave it. Then you can cut a check. There's no rebetting of this. We know uh, Isabel is like me. I, she knows how to uh, uh, squeeze both sides of a penny. You can do it, and it can be done, and, and it should be done. And these guys deserve a kitchen. I totally agree with it. If you want to get it done, that's how you get it done. If you want to spend money, it looks like you're on the spending money path. Now, with, I, I was in the auction business. I submitted lots of RFPs. And when I see uh, Pope coming in that high a second time, I'm a little cynical about what actually occurred. Um, maybe he 
because there's so much information there, there's a way to, to manage bids. And so I, I don't want to say anything about Pope, but I that is those two bids, those are no good. You have to rebid that, period. But the way I suggest that you do it is say, we're going to spend $25,000. We got the check. We're ready to go. Show us what you got. Call the, the, the people back. Go with the best deal that you have, the best uh, that is close to our plans and could get completed on time. And that's it. Two weeks. Um, yeah. OK, to Herb's point, we did know how much the, the kitchen would cost to replace because we did, the, the chief did talk to a company many times over under 25 grand, period. So we knew we could do it for under 25 grand, but that was without prevailing wages. What I see happening in, in the Pope bid is he had to add prevailing wages. I don't think he was giving you guys the middle finger. I think he really, honestly, truly had to bid it the way he bid it, with prevailing wages. So the other, other guy, if the other guy, if you called up some of the references that he listed in his bid, and you found out what this guy was like and whether he was any good or not, you would know <coughs> already that maybe we should go with him. And what I'm thinking is, I did the math, okay, $87,000. Originally, we were talking 80000 for the kitchen. That was a year ago. Then it went down to 60000 Then it went down to 40000 And now you're trying to chip away and give them crap and leave up crap for 25000 If you go with the $87,000 bid, that is only $27,000 over 60 grand. 60 grand is what is in the budget. 60 grand was in the budget. That extra $27,000, if you look at the number of years that that kitchen should last, it should last, let's say it should last 27 years for $27,000. That is $1,000 a year. You divide that by the number of days, it's $3 a day. You probably spend more than $3 a day on replacing plants that the kids trample and in putting down, uh, well, you don't put down weed killer, you just put down mulch on top of weeds. I mean, I really think you ought to look at it not just in one year, you should look at it over the life of the kitchen. When I moved into my house, my husband and I wanted to put a lamp, this was 43 years ago, wanted to put a lamp in our front hallway. And we saw the cheap lamps, and we saw a lamp that we really, really liked. And it was like five times as much as the cheap lamp. But we thought to ourselves, how long is this lamp gonna last? You know that lamp is still up there after 43 years? Now granted, these kitchen appliances are not made as well as they used to be 40 years ago. The appliances that they have now are the regular old customer appliances that crap out after five or 10 years, but you have to look at the life of the money you're spending, not just the cost today. And I think these firefighters deserve to have a decent kitchen. And this 87 grand isn't gonna get them anything fancy. It's not gonna get any special countertops. Oh, maybe you're gonna get those little lights. Oh, how wonderful you get lights. To, so you can see what you're doing on the counter. Okay, take out the lights. I don't know if they'll disagree with that, but you need to give the firefighters what they need to feel good about their job, to feel good about their kitchen, to feel good about being in their living room, which is right next to the kitchen. They live there 24 hours a day. That's all I'm saying. They deserve it. Thank you. Brandon's? Yeah. Uh, I hate the bids. Just go on. I think they're ridiculous. I agree with Irv. There's a lot of stuff in there that's just ridiculous. There's no uh, soffit. 12000 for painting is 
you know, we could get we could get done with a forty dollar can of paint. There's just not a lot of wall to paint. Um, that being said, we are reducing the uh, price by what thirty two thousand dollars. I mean, my papers on here somewhere. Uh, Eric, did you get any feel from County Council as to how much we could reduce this thing and still be playing square with the contract? No, they they cited an attorney general case that was also cited in a uh, in a litigation court case where they opined that the change orders totaling 27% were excessive. It's funny you say this, sir, because I was just trying to sit here and do math. If you remove the $12,000 for the paint, that's roughly 14% of the total bid, uh, which would be about half of the 27% that they thought were excessive and basically designated what it was the exact uh, impermissible substantial modification. Uh, they did not, there isn't something that says where it is. Ultimately, it comes down to uh, if another contractor were to complain. I mean, even if you went to this contractor and said, hey, we would like to do X, Y, and Z, it, this seems to be the prevailing case of 27%, but there's not any sort of a statute that I am aware of that says anything over X percentage constitutes a substantial modification. Okay, well, two things. First, I have some good news. I found an error in the bid, and it's really less than $87,000. It's really $86,999.98, because you. the unit prices prevail, and Thank the plugs, uh, they bid at uh, $833.33 a piece, and if you multiply that by six, you don't get $5,000. So that's the good news. Now, <laughs> continuing here, uh, I found a, what I think is a pretty big mistake in the plans. And I, I would love to say, let's get rid of the, uh, let's get rid of the painting and we make a, a big dent in this thing. But for some reason, the plans say that that pony wall already is, has drywall on it. Don't ask me why. I assume the architect came out and looked at everything before he drew these plans up. But the contractor is probably sitting there waiting to give us an extra change order to add drywall to the uh, pony wall because that isn't what the plan says. Because I was, you know, I was thought, gee, if we took off the paint and we take a little bit off because they don't have to demo that wall by leaving that little countertop thing on. Well, I would counter that, Irv, by saying that it probably calls to demo the pony wall. I think so. And yeah. rebuild. So it wouldn't be a mistake to the plans because the plans don't incorporate an existing pony wall. And I think it's kind of clear to demo, demo kitchen. Well, it says existing low wall with, with new paint finish over existing gypsum board. It's, it's something, so I, don't, I think we have no choice but to rebid it and just get on with it and get it done. And if we wanted to put it, taking Isabel's idea, put an uh, architect's estimate $50,000 to give people something to shoot at. And they can go over or under whatever they want, but it at least lets them know the, the magnitude we're looking at. And the problem with going out to bid again is adds at least three months onto the process. No, it adds about four weeks to the process. We can do it. The bidding doesn't, the, we put the thing out to bid September 22nd, and we could award tonight if the bids had come in right. That's not three months. Hmm. Anything? Could we reasonably go back and... Yeah, we got another question. Sorry. You know, I'm going to run out, I guess. I think that's so. Is there a way to market? It seems like maybe you're not getting enough bids. Is it, I mean, are you not reaching out enough? Are you not talking to the right people to get the right bid, number of bids in? I mean, is that part of, could that be part of the problem? Well, the bidding process went out 
uh, the way it's supposed to. We sent it out to the IJ, I believe, and then through Marin Builders, and Marin Builders subsequently puts it through their computer system and shoots it out to every county in the Bay Area. It also went through the California Builders Exchange. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the problem is this is a little project for the kinds of contractors who are registered to do it. I also think a bit of a challenge was there wasn't a lot of turnaround time. In the essence of trying to get this back, get it done, hope we get a bit that could work and put it in front of this board and move forward. Is there any reason why Tom Roach can't get on the phone tomorrow and call that person that we got the twenty-four ninety-nine bid and say, great, you have the bid, let's go? Yes. They rejected it. They rejected it. They rejected it. They said, they said screw you. Okay, That's but what they said. I mean, us. but the thing, the thing that is, I, and I didn't hear you guys repeat this back. There's a twenty-five thousand dollar threshold, and we know at least we're 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 close in some of these non-DIR uh, contractors that can can do it. So. So why not just try that route before we throw it back to bed? Then we can, then we can do it over the phone. I mean, it's really quite simple. I, the twenty-five thousand dollar threshold is for sealed bids, RFP procedure. Well, you have to still be a DIR registered contractor. That's why those guys pulled out. I understand. You don't have to be a DIR registered contractor. You still have to pay for bailing wages. Okay, you have to pay for bailing wages. But but the total project doesn't have to go. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't quite under. I thought we were free to, to do anything we wanted as long as it didn't exceed twenty five thousand dollars. Now you're saying yes, but it's got to be prevailing wage the whole way through. Correct. So. In the so then Isabella's idea is the best. In idea. the interest of moving things along, um, I'd like to see what the board stands on. My thing, and then I'm going to make possibly another motion. But my first motion would be um, to authorize um, uh, the district manager to um, coordinate a, a minimal kitchen remodel um, that would stay under $25,000, um, that would provide a, a workable, decent kitchen to the firefighters. And I would be happy to meet and discuss in more detail and help along. Um, so that's my motion. Is there a second one? Hearing none, I withdraw my motion. And uh, let's do another one. Um, I'd like to move to um, to ask the district manager to ask the council if uh, we could um, make changes to uh, the eighty thousand eighty seven thousand dollar bid. Um, that would be more in line with what's absolutely necessary in our case. Without rebidding. Without rebidding. Can you repeat that, Isabella? I'm sorry. I would love for you to check with the council if we could adjust, if we could award this bid yet <coughs> make substantial you cannot. changes. The, their opinion is you cannot. You know, once the. That threshold that has been set, and I followed up on this already, that threshold that has been you know, set and kind of cited in subsequent cases is an attorney general opinion uh, on something that came through that he opined that change orders totaling 27% were excessive. So I don't we know. Are at, we're at 37. I, we're at open 37. Right. Uh, now, now, I 27% of, uh, I, mean, I haven't really done the quick math here, but. It's, right now, yeah. 87,000. Seven, it would be knocking off twenty-three thousand four ninety. So, what is eighty-seven thousand? Basically, minus twenty-three thousand. Now you're down to sixty-four thousand. So anything under, anything greater than that, 
twenty thousand or so is going to set off some alarms. Mm. But again, we've got it in this um, request for bids that we can make modifications to the scope of the project. Yes, and we can yeah. discuss that mm -hmm. within within that within a reasonable. Okay, so what, yeah. what if we resume, what if we remove ten thousand dollars worth of this painting charge and get rid of the two appliances for right now? That's uh, well, the paint is at twelve thousand. Yeah, I'm saying ten thousand of that and the twelve thousand for the two appliance things. That's twenty-two thousand dollars. I think we can. Um remove the under cabinet lighting. I, I would much rather have a new refrigerator and under cabinet lights. And yeah, this feel free to chime those in. Those things should have never been put in this bid. Sure. Uh, I mean, your amount, Jeff, is about 25%, correct? Yeah. yeah. Eric, you mentioned alarm sound. <coughs> the who's, who's, where are the alarm sound? Anybody else who bid on it? Anybody else? Uh, uh, you very well. Nobody may complain. Right? And I'm just yeah. strictly stating what the various laws state and what the attorney general opinion is that I spent the time to look at. Sure. Uh, I understand. And that. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not trying to find new and unprecedented ways to delay the problem. Uh, well, okay. But I would. I mean, I would suggest you, the board agrees to the lower bid and then make adjustments as it goes along. Don't we have to have an arm's length agreement with the bidder as to what can be removed? Um, if you agree you to have it, the right within the stating of this contract to make modifications. Okay, so we, he doesn't have to. Remember. I mean, he might be somebody who comes back and says, those are way beyond the scope of what I did. I mean, you knock out paying for 12000 I would think if he's a reasonable person saying, hey, yeah, I get that, now we're down to 75000 great, I'll do the project for you. But if you start keep going in and then try to force him to do the project, he might be the one who sounds the alarm and says, I'm not going to do this. I came in, done an $87,000 project, but now you're trying to whittle down to 54000 Much of this, had my, you know, he might not. He might say, yeah, whatever. I, just want to do the job. I don't know because we have not, or at least I have not. And I don't believe the chief or anybody else has had that conversation. What's the magic number that we're looking for? The uh, twenty-five thousand that we could knock off? Um, well, it's again what I'm twenty-seven. Okay, change orders totaling twenty-seven percent were excessive. That was the attorney general. Uh, and the twenty-seven percent is sorry. But, all right. $23,490 would be 27%, so I would say you don't want to do it at most based on this, if you would be looking at times 0.25, even if you knock 25% off, you'd 21750 Okay, so can, can the board agree um, on um, eliminating item number four? Painting kitchen, we can do it in house. So, I, I guess I would caution us in a way. I mean, do we have to dig into the line items? Can we just instruct whoever is in charge of this, whether it's Chief or Eric or whoever, to work with the contractor to change the bid? Because, I mean, this is the messiest, most unprofessional looking bid I've seen. I, I right, the cross outs, the whatever. I mean, I would not look at this and I'm not looking at this as solid and firm. And I don't know, I would sort of trust the professionals to say like, okay, we want, you know, our goal is to knock this off. What's reasonable, what makes sense? Where can we, you know, to collaborate more on that level rather than us saying. So your motion would be to award the lowest bid uh, with the caveat to bring it down by 27%. So I don't think I want to make that motion because I'm not sure that I support that. Um, I mean, my preference would be, I mean, a set, yeah, I don't like the bit. I, it's, crap. it's crap. So I would, I mean, my motion is to rebid, put in the, you know, whatever, the 50 or something like that, and 
because I mean the spread we're talking about here is whatever it is, twenty thousand something. So essentially, we're gambling on we're gambling away a month of time for the potential of whatever number we get is going to be in another range or numbers we have to look at where we know now about that twenty seven percent. This I think is I mean I don't know I'm in the middle of, you know for work of a five five hundred thousand dollar construction project with budgets with a lot more detail and line items and. This, this just, yeah, this is somebody who chicken scratched it out to get it in, but, um, anyhow, so. Would you repeat the appliances you're going to eliminate? Me? Well, anybody who's coming up with this idea. I didn't um, suggest that. Well, somebody was saying, Take out the this and take out the refrigerator. I mean, it's only you know 15 years old and it's a donated refrigerator, but let's take it out. The refrigerator um, and the stove could be eliminated from a construction project. Yes. And the refrigerator. Refrigerator and stove. Right. They could be, and they could be supplied at a later date outside of the auspices of a construction project. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you. Sure. But how quickly? I mean that. That stove is on its last legs and has been repaired and repaired and repaired over and over and over again. It's 25 years old. Do you want it to blow up in our kitchen? Um, gee, I don't think I would like that. Are Thank sure? you. I, I think it's probably dangerous. <laughs> I think it's dangerous. I've got a question about prevailing wage. Uh, are, are our um, uh, landscaping contractors prevailing wage? Yes. They are, yes. Okay. They are a DIR registered company. Right. Ooh. I am. This is not a rhetorical question, but when you say you're going to put it out to bid again, I mean, it seems like you've really tried to catch every different opportunity for bidders to come already. Who else are you going to possibly get to bid that you haven't already? And it seems like moving forward with one of these bids, maybe taking out the paint or something, I mean, it seems like something needs to move forward. But Rebidding all over again. They only had five days. It seems like they advertised quite a bit. I don't know. It seems like it's just yeah, going to keep. The bids had to come back really fast. Um, the concept, I think, I like of talking to the contractor and say, you know, you tell us how we can cut twenty five thousand twenty thousand dollars, twenty one thousand dollars from this job. One of the things you can tell them is, hey, you don't have to demo the pony wall. She brought both sides of it. And it would make a little less square footage of countertop. Well, I but didn't understand the eight thousand dollars for demo. Well, I don't either, but we can get that down a little maybe if, if, because he wouldn't have to be demoing as much. Uh, the other demo is just pulling the upper cabinets off the walls and maybe they you know, so that's something. May but, I make a motion yet again? I really, I really want to get it done, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to move to approve the lower bid and authorize the district manager to bring to communicate with the contractor and bring it down to by twenty-five thousand dollars or twenty-seven, whatever that is. Um, the you know, as much as possible to get us to the. So in, red, essence, red flag, red flag. in essence, what you're saying is you would like to have the board approve a contingency acceptance of the lowest bid. In other words, we'd accept it if he was willing to come down to a certain extent, but not otherwise. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Can we do that? Again, we can get, it's in the document that we can go back and, and uh, make changes to the scope and the bid to the extent the extent is the issue i think if we if we try to um, force him to lower the price on an item that's necessary that's where he might be like whoa you know that's my bid but if we're taking out an item altogether such as the pain that should really i mean can i make a suggestion sure i mean at the end of the day the board has to 
accept the bid. And you accepted the bid as much as what Jeff said with the contingency. I, my opinion is trying to knock it down anything more than 20,000, you get very close to this threshold that the Attorney General has already uh, <coughs> uh, set. So that'll bring the total contract cost down to $67,000 instead of $87,000, which is about 7,000 over what we budgeted. It's over budget, but it's not over budget all that much and to the point it moves this thing forward and gives this some almost level of finality tonight. Because I think at the end of the day, what we can all agree upon, firefighters, board, and certainly myself, and I guarantee you the chief, is We're no, that we'd like to get a kitchen in as quickly yeah. as possible. Mm -hmm. Correct. I mean, that's the ultimate goal here. Get a functioning kitchen as quickly as a functioning kitchen can be in there that to some level of point isn't just kind of slapped together with duct tape and crazy glue. The, uh, I think myself and the chief, and quite honestly the chief has been the driver behind this entire thing and I've just been trying to help him understand what the various laws and proper procedures are, speak to the contractor and say, they've awarded the bid but it's been instructed to bring this down to 20,000, how do you suggest we do that? Bring it down by 20,000, so we have a $67,000. He may say, I'm no longer interested in that, and if you're going to force me to do that, then I'm going to seek legal remedy and say this is a substantial modification that should be rebid. I don't know. At which point, you're kind of left holding the bat. I would, I would suggest that we come in with an idea. Well, of course. Would like to of course. Of course. Of course. But to that point, it should be a bit of a conversation with the contractor, not you're going to remove X, you're right. going to remove Y. Right. Right. I just think you'll be more amenable to it and doing it correct and doing it that way. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that you can't get the contractor to sign on the bottom line as to the change order until you've awarded the contract. And theoretically, he could say, no, I, I can take 5000 out, but I can't take 20000 Theoretically. So I suggest that a motion be made that we authorize the manager to uh, what's the right word uh, accept the low bid after he has gotten an assurance from the contractor that he would be amenable to lowering the project by let's say twenty thousand dollars and between Eric and the chief and the contractor, they agree what is going to be taken out. So moved. <laughs> Second. So he already moved that. Yeah, he did. He you already said. Oh, no, he said, <laughs> I said, he said, no, I didn't. He said, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't he said, have that, that, that's, that's he fine. said, I suggest that the motion be made. So okay. I'm all for it. <laughs> and if the contractor says no way, see, once you, once you uh, award the contract, you're kind of stuck, mm -hmm. and, and the contractor becomes in the driver's seat. Right. But if we can at least negotiate in good faith what we can do ahead of time, there's still no guarantee you won't just say, sorry, I made a mistake, now it's really so-and-so. But most likely that won't happen. Well, and again, the RFP clearly states that the district can decrease or yeah. increase via change order. It's just you get to that point that the RP doesn't discuss, but it's certainly been discussed by the Attorney General in various cases of what becomes substantial to the point where it becomes, basically it becomes a different project. Yeah. But I know I think you know you sweeten it a little by saying, hey, you what, if you want to charge us the whole thing for your demo cost, go ahead. But you don't have to demo that wall; it can stay as it is. That, you know, that's something of a plus. I can also day. attest to the fact that demo dump fees are significant. But there's nothing to dump, hardly. Well, if yeah. you were to remove the upper cabinets well, and the yeah, water, that is all the appliances. The other thing that's interesting, uh, the stove that's spec is exactly 36 inches wide. That's the opening between the cabinets. But the existing stove is 37 and a half inches wide. So if you left the old stove, you'd have to leave the cabinets back, in, you know, three quarters of an inch on each side, uh, so that you could keep that stove. Then when you got the right one in there later, there'd be a gap to fill in. So I think that some of his line items are way out of whack. 
I think furnish and install cabinets was actually a pretty fair price at $9,000. Yeah. So maybe then you want to go lay off the cabinets. So, so it seems like we, we room, have the ball yeah. going and we can, between the two of you gentlemen, whoever, let's and that's a great I would say you can fairly negotiate $20,000 or so where you can increase change orders without substantially changing the project. Okay. So we, we have a motion on board. We have a motion. We have a second. I uh, call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I ask a question? First. <laughs> well, I said aye, but I'd like motion? to follow it up. Yeah, but we didn't say aye, aye. You need to say, state the motion. Brandon, what do you think of this plan? I mean, does this sound like something that would move made. this thing forward that you guys actually say, hey, maybe we're actually moving something here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It should have been made six months ago. Or at least 45 minutes ago. <laughs> okay. So, amen? Well, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So I, I need a clarification. I, you, you said that everyone has to be prevailing wage, anyone up to 25000 right? So if somebody, oh, does the, the floor out here, you've got to say, hey, you've got to pay your workers 50 bucks an hour, otherwise I can't hire you. Maintenance kind of falls slightly different when you're looking at construction. I mean, I can tell you. But the I guess I guess I my point what the is, are. it's all within labor code 1771 through 1773. Okay, be the right areas to look, and those are what detail prevailing wage. Okay, so I, I know you're not a lawyer. Um, mm -hmm. My my thought is, if you've got a qualified contractor, general contractor, and say, I need. $25,000 worth, I can write a check today, or something to that effect. What can you give me? And you do this with a number of people. Oh, by the way, one of the conditions is you've got to pay prevailing wages. One guy say, well, I'll give you a stove for that. I can't do it. And then maybe someone hungry for work says, well, I can do this, do that. Oh, yeah, I can make, make this work. I mean, why is it our business? Do we have to audit these guys? I mean, isn't it up to them to 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 no, pay workers? No, we have to turn in what I believe is called the PWC-100. Even for under twenty-five thousand. Not for under twenty-five thousand. So, so I guess what I'm saying is, I see this as the threshold. If we get underneath it, we can we can move very quickly. If we if we insist on going above it then we really complicate things and we might not get what we want. I'm just saying that it's it's worth trying because it's something we can do rapidly. Uh, and by the way, I want to say something about the, this bid. There's something called a knockout bid in the auction business where two, two, two bidders get together and one guy says, I won't bid on that project, but if I don't bid on that, I, you pay me X amount of dollars. Who okay, who cares? Well, as a taxpayer, I actually care. <coughs> Thanks for your attention, Bill. Marinwood Community Services District for Fire Protection and Emergency Services to County Service Area 13. Uh, this is our annual agreement with CSA 13, uh, of which Rowan serves as the primary. Uh, are we on to the next issue? I just did. But did you have a motion? And we voted. Before you have a motion, well, before you vote, you're supposed to repeat the motion. And I had asked to repeat the motion, and then Mr. Nessel cut in with a question. To authorize the district manager to I'm sorry. accept Please don't go Excuse fast. Me. To authorize the district manager to accept low bid after assurance from contractor to lower bid by $20,000. Under twenty-five thousand. No, no. Lower at twenty. Basically, keep the project no greater than oh, sixty-seven thousand dollars. Okay, but I still have this question. Chief Roach had talked for a long time with Mr. Pope. I mean, weeks and months, I think. And they had, I believe, they had a really good relationship Mr. because Pope, Mr. Pope. His bid was one hundred and seventeen thousand. Correct. I know, and it was 54 before. You never let me get to my question. 
But this we're is, done with the, we're all I know, done. but this is a caveat, okay? This contractor, how many times has anybody ever talked to this guy and how do you know he will be amenable to doing anything that we ask him? We don't. That's, so you're that's the motion. No, no, that's, that's the, the motion. motion. The, the, the manager or the chief or both are going to talk to the contractor and ask him, will he do this? If he won't, the award isn't made. I don't think you can do that. I don't think you're following. We can, we can. Okay, so you're taking a risk. Okay, that's fine. I think you've, you've reopened the bid at that point. Okay, back to 13. Good. Yes. Um, Hopefully. Annual contract, it is uh, formed every year with CSA 13. It is based on several factors. Primarily, the primary factor is a set percentage based on population in accordance with, or square feet, I am sorry, of living space in accordance with county assessor's records, the percentage that they represent of the whole. Uh, that percentage is applied to the annual fire department budget. Uh, however, it takes a while to get some of those figures, and now that uh, we have gotten those figures, we've put everything together and we've reconciled. It also reconciles with prior years, so any under budget or over budget items from the prior year's estimate are reconciled out and applied. Uh, for this one, we also always, because they paid their entire 26% of the engine lease up front, we back out the engine lease payments from the fire expenditures. I have also backed out the capital reserves allocation, the OPEB trust contribution, as well as the anticipated reimbursable expenses that were budgeted for the FEMA claim. Uh, my rationale behind all of those is the capital reserves aren't an actual operating expense, the, nor is it money gone. The trust contribution is the same thing. Um, and the reimbursable expenses, I did the same thing last year when the chief uh, was awarded the grant for the SCBA purchase. I backed down the amount that we received in grant funding just because I think it's a fair and equitable thing to do. Dan Eilerman, the uh, uh, assistant uh, county administrative officer, certainly agreed with that rationale. And I've done the same thing for FEMA, especially because our anticipated costs for those change dramatically. Um, our actual cost that we don't get reimbursed for FEMA will be reconciled at the end of next year's contract. Okay. Fair enough? Uh, sounds like it. I have to move on to the motion to approve the agreement between uh, the Ramut uh, CSD and uh, Service Area King for 2017-18 as presented. On. Discussion? Absolutely. Thank you. Well, for Linda's information, the contract is $627,000. CSA 13 is paying the rent. I would like to compliment uh, your district manager on the clarity and the accuracy of uh, the calculation uh, on this. It is the clearest, most concise explanation of the contract amount. Basically, in the 50 years I've been doing this uh, for CSA 13, and uh, we're pleased that uh, it's as accurate uh, as it could possibly be. And thank you, Eric. Thank you. I wanted to ask for all that you're talking about this now and not the last item, but you made a generous suggested a generous contribution. Is that still on the table? <laughs> <laughs> no, we are fully supportive of <laughs> upgrading the kitchen and are willing to pay 25.92% of it. I knew where he was going with that last time too because he's going to pay 25.92% anyway. of it based no on this what. agreement regardless, correct? Okay. I just, I was just trying to get your idea is put in a motion. <laughs> Any other comments? Uh, call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, agreement between the County of Marin and Marinwood Community Services.
services district for fire protection and emergency services for the juvenile also. I have a question, and probably the, all the guys that could answer just left the room. No, there's still one that on Oh, good. <laughs> no, my question is, this piece of property is really different from, like, CSA 13, you know, is, is a difference in size, but it's a mirror image of what we already have in, in the Greenwood CSD. This is a very different kind of piece of property. Is there any, is our response any different? For, you know, are we getting loaded with all kinds of medical aids? <coughs> I realize I don't think I've had a fire there in years, but I'm just wondering if there's, a, if there's any extraordinary experience there relative to responses. Any idea? I'm sorry, so your question is? To, to the county farm area, the juvenile hall, the Rotary Valley, the Parks and Rec building, that complex, uh, and the, the other office buildings that are there. Is there any, are we getting hit with a bunch of more calls than we would for other areas? No. Okay, that's, that was my question. Routine medical aids and then the one fire alarm at the uh, funeral hall. I, know, I, I got to chop a, a yeah, I got to chop a door down in the kitchen into the hall once for a call, but that was fun. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that they weren't, you know, paying sort of the same rate as everybody, but overloading us with service calls. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Fire activity summary and chief report. Oh, chief. Who is in here? Who is in here? Well, we have it in the writing, so that's the one. They are busy. Date of the next fire commission meeting is November 7th. Can I uh, back you up for one second? Back Even though the chief isn't here on this, it's, uh, Unless you want to completely table this and have them present the same thing next month, you should still open up public comment. Go ahead. All right. What? I mean, are you going to read it or do you expect? No, I'm just public comment on the. On the fire chief's report? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hang on for a second. Well, he's waiting. I have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, on the maintenance section, it's pretty much written the same every month. And I have two items. One, uh, I think you remember there was an issue where when they went to, they got the generator working and flipped the switch to get emergency power to the station, and nothing happened particularly. Uh, and I'm wondering if, if maybe monthly, they ought to be actually throwing that switch and making sure they really get emergency power to the fire station. Am I making sense? Yeah. Because you aren't doing that, right? You're just running the generator. Yeah, we run the generator and we charge a battery that runs the horn. Okay. Uh, so when we do disconnect from power, everybody's aware. Yeah, but, but it doesn't matter if you're aware, it doesn't work. Right. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Would you have to kill the power to actually plug it in and make sure that the, even though the portable generator works, when you plug it in, it's powering up what you need to power? I'm assuming you need to kill the power first. I think so, yeah. Yep. There's, a, there's, a, there's a double throw right. switch to right. do that. Right. Do you guys do that, I guess, is the question. I'm just suggesting that maybe that should be added to a monthly check or something. Sean, do you mind relaying that notion to? Uh, Chief, I mean, I'm happy to write it down, but if you see him tomorrow or something, just say it's a suggestion to actually plug in the, you know, break the power maybe on like at yeah. some point in time where it would be more convenient, not like 2, 2 p.m., but after it's as few people in the visit. I, I think you can break just that side and yeah, the entire no, this building. Whole system, yeah, it's just the fire house. Right, but what I'm saying is when you break the power to it, I don't know if you can break the power to just the firehouse or if you would want to break the power here too. I think it's just the power. Yeah, I'm not certain on what's being broken. You're not an electrician? You haven't no. checked this schematic? <laughs> no. All right, thank you. The second item, uh, I know in Shane's report for maintenance, he talks about the park maintenance guys doing maintenance in this building. 
which seems logical. But I don't recall seeing in the last year or so listing of any maintenance the firefighters do on the firehouse. And I don't know if they aren't doing it or it isn't get, getting listed. But I, and is that their responsibility? We, we maintain our equipment, anything building related. But who's doing that then is my question. I remember years back there was a handyman that worked, that took care of all the buildings that on an as needed basis. I mean, if they called over and needed some assistance on something, um, the park staff would go over there. Um, but there's nothing like on a uh, scheduled. I'm not even if it wasn't scheduled. That was I was just trying to see, you know, theoretically looking at this maintenance report, nothing's happened over there in the way of building maintenance in the last year or so. Well, I think they've used outside outside uh, repairmen for certain things, but well, if they have, they haven't listed it. Here. Well, I would say that this is looking more at an equipment perspective, and to your point, it's simply not listing what building maintenance has happened mm -hmm. over there. So I can look and do and talk to the chief about can we add to this some level of uh, what type of building maintenance has happened and was it done in house or could we bring somebody in to do it? Yeah. Was that satisfied? Oh yeah, I just want to. I don't. Want to I, I think it's a reasonable. I mean, if a door starts coming off the hinges, uh, somebody oh, will fix it. Kind of. I think it's a good request and it documents <coughs> uh, what type of building maintenance is happening over there on a regular or sporadic basis. Fair enough. Thank you. Do we, David? Yeah, do we have people doing deep cleaning over there? We had a problem with the mold, and it, certainly if it was deep cleaning at least once a year or maybe three times a year, uh, that would uh, take care of problems. I suppose that firefighters don't do that type of work. Uh, who does? Who does? Not that I am aware of, but that would be a better chief question. I don't, they might have somebody coming in. I'm just not, uh, it's not something that I've lodged. I don't know. Okay, and the other thing is, uh, the chief notes that he went to the Mira governing board meetings. Well, we kind of need a report for that. So, what happened? What actions were taken? That sort of thing. So, uh, other than that, this looks like standard stuff that he's giving us. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. I do have a quick question. Go ahead. Um, did you say you were going to table the date of the next commission meeting? No. I heard you. I heard you. Okay. No. It was Eric that said, "Do you, you don't want? Do you want to table the fire activity summary and chief report?" I'm sorry. The fire commission meeting is on, on election okay. day. November seventh. I don't believe we're having an election here. At this building, I, or we're not. I don't believe we have anything. Is anyone else using this? I don't. Right place? I don't actually think so. I don't think so. I, I would. Paula. I would ask Paula to confirm um, because I usually hand those letters to her. She keeps the calendar in use. But I recall. I seem to recall that we actually received a letter from the county saying that they do not need to use our building as a polling place for this November's election. It's <coughs> a okay. local election. I don't think there's any local. Okay, so we're not, we don't have anything. I don't believe so. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's why I qualified that with, I would need to ask Paula to confirm, but I seem to recall I got that letter right, right. to Paula. She, she manages to count me. I don't know everything that happens. Yes. I try. Drive me into the park for recreation. I don't have a question. What do we do? Thank you, Rob. So we just, uh, as far as recreation matters, uh, we just had our fall art and wine show this past Saturday. Wait, we skip one. We're reviewing the draft. Oh, I wasn't at the last uh, commission meeting, so. Yeah, we don't have to discuss it. No, is there any question about it? I don't, I, not that I recall anything of significance except the one that I already talked about, which was uh, with kind of an update status uh, on what's going on with the county's initiative with Ponte, Ponte Fire Road. Kind of covered that on your okay. report. Mm -hmm. Any 
Anybody else? A letter of interest from Savan. There is currently an open alternate commissioner position available for there. Uh, Savan Weisterman showed up to the last meeting. Um, she is a former commissioner. She pulled off uh, right around the time her second child was born. She has expressed interest in filling the alternate seat. I will talk points on to the alternate commissioner position. Sorry. Any discussion? Her. I just, someone ought to whisper to her very quietly that she doesn't live in San Rafael. Spelled R A P H A E L. P H. I, I, I actually caught that too, but I wasn't going to edit that yeah. before. <laughs> it's difficult to, yeah. Is that a knockout factor, do you think? <laughs> At least. <laughs> well, I appreciate that statement, Stephen. Yeah, I, I just want to say I believe she had attendance, a very poor attendance last time she served. I hope that she. Uh, you know, if she's going to take a spot, that she actually attends on a regular basis. And I would yeah. hope that she would, you would impress that upon her. I think she, she had like six absences in a year or something very high like that last time she served. Anybody else? Okay. Anybody else? Call for a point. To a point. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Recreation. I have a question. Um, at the last park and rec meeting, there was a uh, comment about uh, expirations. Is there a due date when the commissioner's is, um, is expiring has to reapply? Um, there will be. I'm actually going to put it out this week uh, and launch it through all the kind of regular things. Put that up on our website for both the fire commission and the park commission. Uh, I, I usually give 30 days on something like that to come back or enough time. Uh, the boards usually appoint those in December. Uh, we could do it in November, but I looked through historically and it seems like we do it in December for terms that actually start in January. Okay. So their deadline will be the same as, uh, as what we put out to the community. Now, with that said, if we don't get enough to fill all the positions, there, it's either until this date or until positions have been filled. Okay. All right. I was just curious because it was mentioned. In the yeah. No, no, I was going to bring it up at the end under okay. other items because okay. I didn't do okay. any agenda. But that was a while for the available appointments for both commissions. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Shane, you're up. Okay. Um, without going into a bunch of details, does anybody have any specific questions about the, the rec activities? Past or future? <laughs> On the report. Future. So, uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm really interested in what, what we're making. On this. I'm looking at the half, uh, Marimla Happy Hour. Okay. Are these licensed vendors? Yes. Big Jim's BBQ, he's a licensed food vendor. Mm -hmm. And who, who is State Room Brewery? Is that Isabel's? I wish. I wish. Establishment on Fourth Street, Center Phillip. Okay. Uh, so they. Okay. So I mean, are we renting a facility? We're taking a cut. What's? I mean, how? I don't personally. I think this is a family uh, location. I don't like the idea of it being a, a happy hour place. Um, what? What's the deal there? I mean, why? You wanted this to be a regional brew fest last time we talked. Well, I I think <laughs> in certain, certain, certain times. So the, so the happy hour uh, is a small event that, you know, by and large residents, we have child care available during the event. It's a couple hours where we get a local brewery to come to do tastings. They provide all the alcohol and uh, don't charge us. So we're going to keep any uh, revenue running. And how much revenue do you anticipate? Um, I'm not sure on that one. Um, our only true expenses on that is we <coughs> hire a musician, which varies in cost, but it's only about 150 bucks. 150 bucks and what? And we, have about three 50, weeks, we, have right? about, we have about 50 people in attendance, so we bring in about $500, so you can do the math on that. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay, and then your meeting. Is October 24th. Yeah, just 
ask any park maintenance questions either? Or you know, more just questions? No, good, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Land design keeping up with their work? Uh, more or less. <laughs> Tracking the web chain, right? Something like that. Uh, request for future meeting agenda items. Isabel? Um, I don't know how the rest of the board felt about it, but I was personally very offended by the letter we received from Mr. Breyer. And um, I tried to respect everybody, and um, this was very disrespectful and unnecessarily divisive to the community. It really tries to, I don't know, stir in hatred, anger, I don't know what. Um, and I would like, more, more upsetting was the fact that it was full of misrepresentation, twisted facts, inconsistencies, and therefore I would like to ask the district manager to furnish a response letter to Mr. Bryan. Hmm. That's not in the package, is that his request for a future meeting? We would have to, I guess, approve it, right? Doing other business. Can I? I don't think you want to. I weighed that letter a lot this weekend, and I felt I was very personally attacked to the point where it's potential libel against me by the author of this letter and everybody he spoke for. I personally, after a lot of thought on it, uh, and you're welcome to share this too decided that it was better to uh, not even dignify the letter with response. What, what, what I'm concerned with is this letter um, misrepresents many facts that a community member who might be looking through the packet will um, have a very different picture from what's, what truly perspired. That's my reason for it. But if there is no board support, then of course it's not going to happen. I was just glad that it wasn't brought up during the whole ordeal with the uh, kitchen. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm glad it wasn't brought up when we were discussing the kitchen. That's all. Okay. Where can I get a copy of the letter? It's not it's in my in package. package. It's in the package. Yeah, it's in the package. The, the one that you sent out Friday? Or? Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's right after the memo uh, that lists the two yeah. options. In, in any case, I, I'm just. I think it's done. You, you as a president, uh, may decide not to put it on the agenda oh, and yeah. that's not going oh, to happen. Okay. So that's my wishful thinking, and it's up I, to you. I know you were upset because I saw you first. Monday. Um, I, I just, I, I think it's better left where it belongs when I toss this in the recycling. Okay. Uh, recognitions and board member meetings. Were there no other denies? Say you quote went on to the next item. Are you you now on the next item? You finished I, request for future board meeting agenda. I, yeah, I, I, I just had a comment on Mr. Breyer's letter. Yeah, I may, I, may I make a comment? Did you did you request comments on that? No, we didn't. So can I comment? First, you go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, but you, you, according to the Robert's rules that you guys all follow precisely, you're supposed to mention that you're going on to the next item. I, and I didn't I did. do it. Well, I'm very sorry. I'll, I'll go out and buy some hearing aids. Mm -hmm. um, for requests for future meeting agenda I, item. Hang on for a second. I, Linda, I, I'm on the previous item. I just wanted to say. Make your comment. 
I'm going to do the same thing you do, okay? Good. Um, I, I think you should respond, but you don't have to respond point by point. I think that would be a mistake. But you, it should at least give the courtesy of acknowledgement. We've received your letter. We are considering the items contained where it where it's the it's the union. I mean, I know it's the union. So so you don't. I, I think an acknowledgement. This is just like the Miller issue. If you don't respond back, no, you're, you you actually uh, provoke a response. That's all I have to say. Frankly, I don't. So you can really do care whatever you about wish. His response. He was at the meet last meeting and he voiced his opinion at the last meeting. This letter that he sent later on is just fuel for different fires. That's all. I request for meeting agenda. You have some. Yeah, it's the same one that I had last month, and I'd like it in writing again. I would like to see a policy regarding the timely responses to resident correspondence. In other words, please don't ignore resident requests or comments, especially when they're asking a question. I mean, obviously, if I just write in something every other month and say blah, 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 but if I request an answer, I would like a response. Okay. Policy, please. Thank you. Uh, on to recognitions and but, uh, Hang on for a second. I have some comments, too. Um, for the future uh, items, uh, so uh, last month uh, there was discussion of a uh, pending housing bill that's uh, coming down, and uh, we in this area, in this district, we have up to 1,500 homes that could be built. Um, I would like to see us. Dis what SB 35 basically says. They don't even have to notify us. They can put up a building within, or they can get a building approved within 90 days uh, under 150 units. That makes uh, it very likely that we're going to see some building and we're going to see uh, uh, activity in our community quickly. I guess what I'm, and, and how does this relate? Uh, this relates to how we deliver services. I would like to see us do some advanced planning on the possibility of adding residents and how we will respond to the challenges that come uh, to the community. Is that an agenda item? Yeah, that could be an agenda item. Or you can not. Can I ask a question of Stephen? Sure. Yeah. Um, how, where would they be putting these units? Uh, they have already pre-selected. They have uh, overlays uh, up near Big Rock. Uh, the, uh, okay, on the Lucas property. Then. What's that? On the Lucas property? No, Lucas too. But Big Rock, uh, there's a, a big lot on both sides. The Big Rock uh, deli area, and then across the, the way, there's another big open area. That is very likely to have 60 units each, I think. Um, of course, Marinwood uh, Plaza, uh, St. Vincent, Silvera, um, Grady Ranch, I honestly, I don't know what's going on with that. That's actually bigger than that. So, But the point is, is that uh, we have 1,700 <coughs> units now, and if they build them, that's another 1,100 units. It's big changes for the district and funding for various activities. Yes, I have something for our future agenda. Um, I'd like to ask the district manager if you would clarify for us what is the subject, subject matter um, boundaries that this district is uh, district board is to allow discussion for in its meetings, and what it does not have to allow in its meetings. Recognitions of board member items of interest. Wow. Thank you. Um, I'm personally very affected emotionally by what's happening um, with all the fires up north, and I would like to thank all California firefighters and 
and um, everybody from our unit who participated. Um, it's it's tough times, and uh, I hope that the fire gets under control soon. Lastly, but not leastly, I would like to hear a motion to return. So, mm -hmm. okay.